Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, think of your website like a file folder full of pages and your home page, your about page, your contact page, your products and services page, and that host houses that file folder. And so when people type in your domain, it's like your home address. So when they uh, you know, come to my house, they have to have an address. It's the same thing for your website. So with that out of the way, uh, the three platforms that I use the most, actually there's two, I used to use what's called WordPress. And WordPress is hard to use. Um, you have to add widgets and just different things. And I found it to be very glitchy and I couldn't actually customize it as much as I wanted, although that is part of the features of it is that you can customize. So I went from WordPress to Squarespace when I started Genius Communication in 2017, and I have not looked back. So Squarespace is to me the top of the line uh, website platform. It is only $216 a year, and they have just numerous templates that you can use and customize. They now have a Squarespace 7.1, uh, so if you can't afford a developer, uh, I would definitely uh, take a peek at Squarespace. Uh, the second one is Wix, and Wix is actually about $268 a year. Uh, it's uh, a close second to Squarespace, but it's not as customizable. Um, it, it takes a lot to get them to look unique, and I can show you guys a couple examples. Uh, but anyway, Squarespace is my favorite. Uh, WordPress if you're on a shoestring budget, but it is difficult to use and it's not a host. Okay, so WordPress is where you build it, but they don't host it. You have to purchase that. So Squarespace first, Wix second, WordPress if you literally have no money to eat. Okay. All right, so let's get into the five design elements. It's very simple and then we'll get into looking at y'all's websites. So the first one is it needs to be easy to use. There's a myth out there that millennials know how to use computers better than us old folks. That's not true. Millennials are not as scared of computers as us older people. And so even with today's uh, generation that has grown up with phones and computers and technology, it still needs to be easy to use. Things should be right where they need to be uh, and uniform in a way so that people are not having to hunt for things. And we'll get to that in a second, even more. So it shouldn't be like a Sherlock Holmes mystery when people are at your website. And there are specific things that are needed, which I'll get into in a second. Number two, white space. And I'm sure some of you have done this, and I've talked about this a little bit before, where you go to a website and there's so much coming at you. There's all kinds of graphics, there's all kinds of texts and links, and you're like, whoa, I, my life is already cluttered enough. I don't need to look at a website that is cluttered. So white space is a design element used in uh, magazines and even newspapers where the white space on those pages actually allow or guide people's eyes to the things you want them to see. So you'll have just the right amount of white space so that people, they can land, their eyes can have a rest, they'll spend more time there, they'll look at your stuff more. So you want to have white space so that does give people uh, a, an attention to your content as well, as well as rest. The other thing is it needs to be simple. And uh, so you need to eliminate what's necessary, what's redundant, what's distracting, or what is confusing. And uh, for those of you that tend to have personalities, my S personalities and my C personalities, where uh, communication is very important to you, but you can tend to repeat yourself or be wordy, that can translate over into your website. So when you're looking at your website, there are some things you do want repeated. For example, I'll have a contact page at the top as well as at the bottom. 
uh, you'll have the about at the top and you may have it at the bottom as well. Um, and by the way, you do need a privacy policy and um, what's called, I think it's GDPR, where it tells how you're using the data that people give you on your website that's now actually a law. So if you do not have that privacy policy, et cetera, uh, you'll probably want to get it. And you're welcome to copy it from my website and have your developer put it in there, or you can add it as well. But uh, eliminate what's necessary, uh, what's distracting. If you're an eye personality, you're probably going to have a, a bunch of flash and color and things like that. You don't want your website to look like a coloring book unless that's what you're selling. So, and we'll get to that in a second. And then your face. So many of you know by now that uh, I'm an introvert. I don't like my face everywhere, but it's a necessary evil because the people need to see your face. They need to see your staff's faces because the more people see your face, the more they like you. And when they walk in and they see a familiar face, it's really beneficial. And, uh, and, and by the way, if you have like a shop cat or a shop dog, put them on there too. I have a general insurance agency shop dog uh, on their website. She's, of course, customer service. So they need to see your face somewhere. Even if it's not the front page, you can put it in the about. But that smiling face inspires trust. And then the final thing that you need is color psychology. So let me uh, show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull up a page here. I should have had it open, but I just now thought about it. So color psychology uh, has been used in marketing for a very long time, and uh, it actually determines, it's like 90 plus percent uh, if people do business with you, the colors you use on your website. And so what I'm going to do is pull up the colors. Let's see here. Okay. Here we go. And I can send this to you guys if you want, but white is the white space. And again, that's very, very important to have. Black represents authority, boldness, elegance, power, and strength. So if you want to uh, bring a, a sense of sophistication and prestige to your website, you'll want to use black. Uh, red is about action. So all of the red, the orange, the yellow, those bright colors are great for your buttons. So if you want people to click and get your free uh, resource or sign up for your membership or log in, if it's a membership website, you want some type of bold color and red is a really good one. Uh, it's associated with action, excitement, and passion. It's an act now color. Uh, it also draws the eyes. Now, uh, if you're using red as a dominant color, that's fine as well. Uh, but the main thing is anywhere that you want your uh, visitor to take action, you wanna use red. The other thing that's important with those primary bright colors is they're very fast paced colors. So if you don't want your visitor to spend time on your website, reading your blogs and getting to know you, use these action colors. But if you want them to stay, then you want to go to some of the more muted colors like blue. So the reason Facebook is blue is because Facebook or blue communicates trust, confidence and security, which they're not living true to their color, if y'all haven't noticed. So uh, blue is great for service-based businesses where you want people to trust you right from the start. And it's one of the most used colors on the internet. So blue causes your viewer to relax, to think intelligently and reevaluate decisions. It's also open communication. So it's a great color for you. Again, orange is great for enthusiasm and playfulness and even affordability. Uh, yellow is sunshine and happy, warmth, excitement, and fun. Green is uh, really big for like money, health, wellness websites. They use them quite a bit. Purple is used quite a bit for ambition uh, and things like that, luxury and nobility. Pink, I would probably stay away from um, 
unless you're like a youthful website or it's used uh, very sparingly or you're a ladies website. And then brown, have y'all ever wondered why UPS is brown? I mean, if there's, to me, if there's any more of a boring color, I would have to say it's brown even versus black. Well, the reason why is it represents stability. Okay, so when you see that UPS truck, it's like you knew they were coming and there they are. So uh, that's probably why he picked brown. And then gray and silver is wisdom, seriousness, and confidence. So again, people will purchase from you uh, based on your colors. That's 95% of their decision. So I see a chat here. Let me uh, see what's going on. Mm, okay. I will send those to you guys. Okay, so let's get to uh, the pages you need. So let me go back into full screen mode. So color psychology is very important. And if you look at the Chamber's new website, which I love, there's a lot of the red, white, and blue, which I think is perfect for patriotism. I don't know if that was uh, on purpose, but the red is action, the blue is trust. So main pages, okay. Number one, you need the home page. Everybody knows that. Uh, your home page, though, is the most critical because when people see your home page, that right there is the immediate first impression they're going to get of you. And uh, the second most important is your about, even over your products or services, because once people see a good home page, they're then like, oh, I want to know about this business a little bit more. I want to know about this person. So they will click the about. Typically, they will scan it unless you um, have great headlines to break up your text and you have information that's uh, important. Unfortunately, most corporate, most boring uh, websites, it's, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's not interesting at all. And so people will just click right off of it and maybe check out your services or your products. So your about page being the second most important, and this is not in the, the worksheet, so you may want to write this down, should be your story. So let me, um, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I have been building uh, a true crime website and I've come a long way when it comes to my branding and the message I want to convey. So uh, I'm gonna bring this one up because I literally have been building it this past week. So if you go to my website, um, and it's not live yet, uh, but when you go into, well, let me take you on down. Okay, so right here, this is a great place on your homepage to put the start of your about. So I'm going to have a picture here of me and my sister and mother because we're doing the podcast. But right here, I start a story because people love stories. So I talk about how I'm a true crime addict, how it runs in my family, my dad, my mom, my sister, blah, blah. And then I go into, okay, how did I even start this podcast? If you go into the read more, and again, I'm going to replace the picture, but notice my face is here. So it all started when... And then I go into the story, okay? So it's very important to have your story. So don't just say, we as a financial services business handle retirement and investing and blah, blah. Yeah, that's fine. You can put that on there, but you know, a lot of people actually will know that when they look at your products. So why did you start this business? Why uh, are you even open? What do you love about what you do? What is important to you when it, when you're taking care of your customers, you want to build that rapport. So again, because the about page is uh, the second most important page on your website, it needs to be given just as much uh, focus and consideration as your home page, even more so than your products and services page. So you can have a little smidgen of your about on your home page, which is really a good idea because once they click read more, you know you've got them on the hook because they're committing to that by clicking that. And then of course your services and products. Uh, a contact is important. Um, I'm surprised at how many people use contact on some websites. 
And then free resources or what's called an opt-in. Now I've talked about this before, um, and that is something that is relevant, fun. It can be infotainment. Uh, it can be something that's uh, very much needed to help your clients making good decisions, anything that's beneficial and helpful or fun. So quizzes are a great example uh, on um, a website that I just built for job aloft. So you guys are going to get to see um, a sneak peek of it. We're about to go live. Um, but I rebuilt their site. And if you go in here, once it's live, you're going to see at the very top, what's your coffee personality. And so people are going to love doing that. It's a really fun uh, quiz. I've taken it. And then again, their story, uh, the beans, their story. Like I had no idea when you buy at job aloft that, um, all the profits go to small businesses and um, nonprofits. I had no idea. But having a, a, a quiz on here, if you go to uh, Diamonds Evermore, Miss Gail had hers rebuilt not too long ago. If you go here, you see education. So you've got a diamond guide, gemstones. I actually use this when I'm helping customers because sometimes I'm like, I don't know. And so I have to go in here and check things out. So she's got relevant information and the, the word education will draw people there so that they know uh, what they're doing when they make their purchases. Okay. So let's get back into our slides here. And finally the blog slash vlog. Now, if uh, you don't know what a vlog is, cause I didn't know until I was about 45, a vlog is a video blog. And here's the thing, this is optional. You know, a lot of people think that they need to have a blog. There's a lot of work in it. There really is. The purpose of the blog is to number one, get people to stay at your website and also to position you as an expert, but it's optional. So if you've got some great resources for them, like Miss Gail has with her education, I would not worry about it. If you're a natural writer or you're always finding yourself thinking, man, I need to write about this and get on a website because people keep asking me this question 500 times a day. So if there's like some generalized things or you can create an FAQ, do that. But just know that if you start a blog, it does take commitment. It does take work. So here's what I recommend for those of you that you know you're not going to have a blog. You have no interest in having a blog or a blog. And it's just extra work is do micro blogging. So if you go to like, for example, Miss Gill's website, sorry. If you go to Miss Gill's website or you go to, uh, or Facebook, or you go to my Facebook, uh, Instagram, et cetera, you'll see what's called micro blogging. And that's where you just got some short, either uh, helpful information or, um, you know, behind the scenes information or whatever it is, that's a micro blog. And people are reading those things more than they are uh, blog posts. Okay. And there's a lot of tricks and tips for, uh, blog posts I could give you, but it'd be outside the scope of this training this morning. So for those of you that you want just a very simple uh, website and you don't want to go into different pages, you can build a one page website and it will have all of those elements I just showed you right here, right on the front page. And uh, so let me give you an example of that. And then let's look at some websites. So if you go to um, another website I built, it's Guadalajara. So the restaurant itself is not open yet. Okay. Uh, we did have the training kitchen. And so we just needed something very, very simple. We needed a website where they could uh, get information as far as location and hours. We needed a menu and then we needed a place where they could order uh, Guad to go. So this is a one page website. Notice I still have the links at the top but they don't go to different pages. It just goes to sections. And so the very first thing is the story. How did the story, how, how did they get open? Okay, that's, that's the first thing. What, what, and then why are they back? And then over here, we've got the phone, we've got the location, we have the hours. Then uh, on a lot of my 
uh, customers where they have a lot of photos or we're trying to um, build rapport and a sense of history in their business, I will include a gallery. And so right here on the very front page, you see Mr. Um, I think his name's Casillas that started Guadalajara, their store, which I had no idea. And then as you go down, you can see some of the more um, recent photos. And then right here's their menu. Okay, so this is all on one page. So if you don't want to build multiple pages, this is a great option for you. You can include the story of the, um, the business and everything else that you need. But if you have lots of products and services, you'll have to have multiple pages. Okay, but these are very, very effective. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, let me get rid of this. And I've shown you a couple of examples. So I had someone, let me move this out of the way, um, that they're building the mental health resource website and he wanted my opinion. So uh, I love this website. Now the colors, uh, I probably wouldn't pick for a business, but they're great for the mental health because they're happy, they're happy colors. But notice this blue purple color, which is great. It's going to epitomize uh, trust, but their branding also has the purple, the pink and the blue. So your branding should come out of in your colors. And if you're not sure what colors and things you want to use, let me, I'm gonna give you a secret. And uh, if you could not share this secret, of course I'll put it on my website so everybody will know. But one of my secrets to building websites that I implemented in the last year is I will have my clients create a Pinterest board. And on the Pinterest board, I'll have them just, you know, pin uh, colors and textures they like and fonts that they like and um, colors that they like. And I will take those pins and literally build their website. So when you look at Java Lock, when we get that live, he pinned the dark blue gray. He pinned the linen color. Uh, he, he liked a script as well as uh, the, the serif font. So I took all that he liked and brought it into his website. Plus I know his personality because I know him pretty well. So I, I tried to bring that out because your personal brand and your business brand go together. Uh, you're gonna come out into your website. So um, the video at the front, I think is a great touch. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, what we stand for, where we're located, join our team. Uh, those are neat graphics as well. They have a little bit of, of an about here and then a brief word from the director. But one thing that um, I would change, so if he watches this later, because he asked me to critique it, is down here. So this right here for the crisis line, it stands out. But this gray seems a little out of branding, I guess you would say. So what I would use is this blue purple down here at the bottom, if it was me. And if it makes the donate look like a crayon or like a coloring book, change that color. Um, but anyway, so that would be the only thing I would change. Notice how simple it is, who we are. If you click services, you can look at everything. So it's a very easy to use website with plenty of white space, plenty of different things going on here that um, make it fun. Uh, hopeful and energetic. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your uh, website here in the chat. Let's critique it. Miss Jerry, I have a question while they're doing that. Okay. Okay. So the if you were going to do the one page one where everything's there. Is that an option in Squarespace? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Every website I showed you is Squarespace. It's also an option in Wix. And with, oh. a, with a new Squarespace, you can have colored backgrounds too, um, where before you had to get into code. So um, if you have a one page, 
I do recommend breaking up the white space with some shots of color. So let me show you. So if you go to my website um, that I just rebuilt, uh, now where it's half blue, half white, that gets in the code. But if you scroll down. You took the shared screen off so we can't see it. Thank you. Let me get back over here. Okay. So if you scroll down, um, so you notice I've got like white, space but then down here this block right here is a, a blue gray um and then down at the bottom it's black so um so uh, sorry i just spanked my cat if you go over here to courses and again this would be a sample of a one page so this is what's called a sales funnel so if you come over here um, you'll notice I've got a lot of colored blocks. And so you want to break up that space with either pictures and or colors. So it's not just one um, white blob. Okay, so let me look here. Okay, so Miss Gill, your website's perfect, but I'll look at it in a second. All right, let's go to contemporary benefits. So let me copy and paste this. And so this is Marley's, and um, so we want to, to take a look. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, and you guys are welcome to give feedback. Um, we'll do it uh, kindly. But uh, the first thing uh, I would say, Marley, is I love this photo right here. I love it. But this up here, this blue, it doesn't pop, so, uh, and then things are a little bit crowded. Uh, so what I would do is I would put the logo a little bit more over uh, onto the left, and I would get the menu a little bit more over here, as well as the search. Now, the thing with the search is I don't know who's hosting your website, um, who built it, but you can a lot of times just have the search icon over here and yeah. as well. Yeah. Do what? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so do what? Sorry. Okay. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so over here on the left is my little search. So people recognize that. So you might do that for yours. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't pop very well. So I'd maybe pick a white uh, or maybe see what black does. Or on some websites, you can have all of this on the picture. Um, so you might, you might check into that. Uh, this, guys, is what's called a parallax scroll, which means that as you move up, the previous section disappears and they're very popular. Um, I love this uh, video over here. I would probably, again, if you can, get some of the text maybe over to the left a little bit so it's uh, more symmetrical. Um, love this right here. This is very good. But again, this contact, uh, I would make that a color and then I would make this stand out more. So I would not have the background um, where everything just kind of blends in, <clears throat> blends in, okay? So some way where you can uh, maybe make this a solid color here, Marley, and then keep this the background, something. There needs to be a little bit more white space, I would say, if that's uh, beneficial. Do you have any questions, Marley, or anything that you would like to, to add? Yeah, th this is okay, but again, we need some white space. That, that's going to be the number one thing. If I was you, uh, I would add some white space. Yes, I love the Achieve It background, too. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so let's look at Curry County abstract that is the elusive Alyssa Jones okay let me get this in here and close this okay 
Okay. So this is what I was talking about, Marley, is see at the top, we just got some uh, white space, which is good. Uh, I love, um, you can tell the branding immediately. If you go to Curry County Abstract, you see their sign has the blue and the white. And uh, I love this. Hi, how can I help you? So this is really good. And people use this stuff. So if you can have that little chat button, uh, that's great. Uh, and I've, I've worked, I worked with Alyssa just a little bit when they were building this, um, but start the process, it's orange. So when I pulled this up, what did you immediately go to? You went to the picture with the blue square and the orange buttons. That's a really good touch. Notice this is blue, so it breaks up from the rest of the, um, the, the website. And then we have the services right here. So what that tells me, is um, I don't have to click services up there. It's right here at the top and, or on their home page, and that's great. Now, you know, um, title and abstracts probably not the most exciting, um, you know, business out there, uh, along with like insurance and things like that. So you're probably gonna have to have some of the boring stuff on here, but it's done very well. Again, the orange <laughs> button of contact us today, and I made them. Uh, put their faces on here. And so by elusive Alyssa Jones, you can imagine how happy she was with that. <laughs> but I went in and took some pictures and we were able to get them on the very front page. And so see that right there, you got all these smiling faces and, uh, and you know who you're going to be talking to when you get there. So this is a, a very important. And then why do I need title insurance, et cetera? So it, it looks really well uh, designed, Alyssa. If there was a way maybe right here, and this is just the OCD part of me, if we could have right here white and right here uh, white, that would just make my life so much better as of today. <laughs> but if you can't do it, that's fine. But um, yeah, that would be really cool. But notice, now when I was talking about redundancy, uh, this is important to point out because sometimes redundancy is very important. The contact us today, the start the process. Did you guys notice as we scroll down, call now, and then you have um, another call now. Uh, these are important things. Uh, you do want your phone number in as many places as possible. And then down here, this is a great option for what's called your footer. So this is called a footer. So here you have a map, you have hours, and you have their address. Now, something like a restaurant or a retail store, I recommend your hours or your number being somewhere at the top or very close to the top, or at least have a location hours link that will take them right to this. For them being a, a, a service-based business, this is perfect. I love it. So uh, this is a really good website. Um, it doesn't feel cluttered to me the way it's broken up, but uh, could some of you unmute your uh, yourselves and, and tell me, does it feel cluttered to you guys? I'm curious, cause you know, like I said, I worked with them just a little bit like on their pictures and a couple color choices, uh, but does is it cluttered? Well, if you want the truth and honesty from my point of view, it seems really, really wordy. Okay, so uh, I would, yeah, I could see that. Um, one thing that you might do, Alyssa, is, so on the hour services, a couple things. Maybe break it up by bullet points in two columns, or start with our services and have a learn more button or eliminate it and go ahead and have people go to our services. Um, that may help a little bit. Uh, any other uh, thoughts or suggestions? Hi, this is Luke uh, with the Chamber. In my opinion, the way the site's up is generally fine. It is a bit wordy, like Ms. Dale did say, uh, but the main thing is we have a text box on the left, then a major one in the center, and then one on the right. The site doesn't do a good job guiding you to each text box, and that's the reason you might think it looks a bit cluttered, in my opinion. Okay, so you're saying like, um, 
right here we have the text box and then right here we have the text box and you're saying to break that up? Well, kind of to guide, to, to alter the site design a bit to guide you to each text box. Mm -hmm. so when you look at one, I should be looking at one and immediately my eyes should start flowing to the next one. I shouldn't have to search for it. Mm-hmm. And one thing that uh, I'm seeing, Alyssa, that you might have them do is why do I need title insurance? I would actually put that toward the top because a lot of people don't even know what you guys do. Um, so maybe more of a flow that guides people from section to section. Uh, like whenever um, I built mine where it says introverts only, I had to start here. And so it was like, okay, where do introverts need to start? Well, right there. And so then it's like step one, step two, step three. Uh, so that may be what Luke is referring to, to a degree, uh, you know, just where it guides people. Uh, the other thing is you can break up your text by having like blocks next to the picture uh, and shorter bits. And so uh, you probably need to... Um, to do that. So uh, Alyssa, we may uh, talk more uh, later, but I do agree. I think that it needs to flow a little bit better. And then I would definitely put this, why do I need title insurance at the top? Because people do not know. Okay. Any other thoughts, guys? These are really, it, it is wordy. And what's funny is when me and Alyssa were working on her branding, uh, she was my first uh, guinea pig, so to speak. Wordiness was an issue we revisited several times. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's not surprising because her type of personality and being detail focused will be more wordy. Okay. If hey, involved, Sherry. Uh huh. Um, is there, what do you think about um, having like an op optional drop down, like when you like to minimize? the quote unquote wordiness, if you were to scroll down and then hit services and then it opens up, is that uh, an option or is Absolutely. that? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that will clean it up quite a bit. But again, you know, people can, they're used to using the menu. Uh, so you can do a drop down or you can eliminate services completely. Um, and I mean, I kind of like that it's right there, but the wordiness is overwhelming. But yes, that's a good idea too. Anything else? Okay, so let's go to clovis.edu. Okay, so this is, um, this is what I would call a typical functional website for a large corporation or educational uh, education organization. So um, these can be tough to do because there is so much information you have to get out and it, it does need to come out in the website. So uh, there might be a little bit more wording uh, than you would have on another website, but here's what I like. So, it does seem a little bland, but that is typical of education. So if you can spice it up some way, um, that'd be great. But what I love is you've got this neat uh, graphic over here on the left, which is a lot of fun. But notice it's uh, divided up by these different colored uh, headlines. So that's really neat. And, um, and then down here at the bottom, we have the, the header and the footer that are broken up. Um, this Instagram thing though, I don't see any way to go to the Instagram. Um, so you might eliminate that or, uh, what a lot of people do is just say have it up here, which is very normal. So I'm not sure what is up with that, but you might eliminate that column. Um, and I don't see... Uh, and I haven't seen this so far. I might have missed it. I don't see y'all's privacy policy. So let me show you that real quick. So down here, you have to have a privacy policy and I also have a disclaimer. 
when people click your privacy policy, this is a terms of service and privacy policy for the website. Again, these are required. If you ever get sued by using people's information, like Facebook has gotten sued and different ones, actually it's their fault, these big companies, it's their fault that we have to have this now, uh, you can lose millions or get fined. So you need to, again, you can copy mine, whatever you need to do, but you need a privacy and terms. And then I just have a disclaimer uh, so that people know um, that I'm not giving average earnings, et cetera. Okay, so uh, I'm surprised I don't have this on the Clovis Community College uh, website. Maybe it's somewhere I'm just not knowing. Uh, I do like the contact info right here, uh, hours of uh, operation, it's great. And then different places they can go to. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, it seems pretty straightforward, pretty typical of an education website, but do y'all have any suggestions? Hey, Jerry, will you scroll down to the bottom? And it, this may be me and I may be ignorant, but is that Canvas login or Campus login? Oh, see, now Kit is um, a, a C personality. She's going to see those things. So we are curious, is it supposed to be Canvas log login? It is. So um, the like student portal that they use to access their courses is Canvas, but that is a really good thing. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if you click, okay, so it's supposed to be. Very interesting, but it did, because I would think it should be Campus. So. Yeah, me too. Okay. Well, it, it's, it's correct. So that's good. Uh, anybody else? Okay, so what I'm going to do is look for faces. Okay, so did you guys notice how slow that picture loaded up? And part of it could be that we, we're doing, you know, recording a Zoom. But let me show you uh, this little jewel right here. So it's called Tiny PNG and uh, dot com and you can take really large high res pictures that can take forever to load up drop them right here and it will compress the file size but leave the picture just as pretty so tinypng.com and png is simply a type of uh, picture file like jpeg gif and then png okay uh, if you notice all the Ted Bundy stuff at the top, it's because of research, not that I'm obsessed, in case you were wondering. Okay, let me get back to, oops, let me get back to our chat, and let's, we've got time for one more, and any questions, where is my chat? Um, make sure you get them here. Okay, skin there. oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, skincare. Okay, Bell Aesthetics. All right, so uh, is this a WordPress? Um, what, what's the platform you use to design this? Patricia. It's actually a free, pay, free website from where I actually purchased my uh, liability insurance. Okay. So All it's right. a template. Okay, so... Um, Here's what I would recommend. There's nothing that wows me. So if I, if I go to your website, I'm just probably not gonna take action. Um, it, it, with something like yours, it needs to be rich. And, and so uh, I wouldn't have the blue background, but the, it, there, because it's a free website, it's gonna be very generic. And so I would highly recommend that you, um, if you really want it to pop, that you do a Squarespace website. And um, because, I mean, it could just be my opinion, but I don't see your face. Um, these are typical photos that you would expect for aesthetics. And I would rather have something that would be maybe uh, richer or unusual, something I don't expect to see. I like your renew, rejuvenate, and revitalize. That's good. Uh, 
but yes, it, it just really doesn't stand out to me. And uh, so do you, any of you have any uh, thoughts and things to share with her? Okay, there's Very some, un, sorry, there's some unfinished down here, like the about and all of these are incomplete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's really important. That's really important. You actually have to click on those and it brings you to that page. Oh, gotcha. the fact that we didn't know that, um, that concerns me because honestly, if I was to come to this, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even look over there. I would just be like, hmm, it really doesn't have kind of what I want. So this, this takes me into a very important philosophy. Um, and I just did a blog post on it. So let me pull it up. Uh, in preparation for today, I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and write a blog post. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's your fist? Okay, the F factor. So the F factor does not stand for a bad word. It is how people read your website. So here's what might be happening, Patricia, is when people go to a website, see these patterns here? They spend the most time in the red places, and it looks like an F. Um, the logo gets the most attention. Uh, it's like seven seconds, I believe. Then it goes to the menu, uh, but then they all go down here. There's a reason the menu is across the top or at the left. The problem with yours is I don't know it's a menu because it's almost like these, I keep pointing at my screen and y'all can't see what I'm pointing at. It's almost like these right here coincide with your text. So when home, I would think welcome. Uh, you know, even though it, when you read what is said, you realize these don't fit and might be menu things, but because they're not broken up, this isn't a color or the menu's not along the top. I didn't know that. So I would use the F factor uh, and what people are used to. This is where normal comes in. This is where you want people to know this is a menu. Uh, so using it on the left-hand side is very effective. I think it just needs to stand out more so we know that's a menu. I could be wrong. But used to, when you came into Amazon, they had their menu over here on the left-hand side. And I think that if you like click on, let's say one of their, no, let me, um, let me type in uh, face care. Notice they have all this stuff over here on the left-hand side. People will go to that, but their menu is along the top. And they used to have a menu over on the left. It looks like they've changed it. So they're making me out to be a, a fibber. But I would definitely make these stand out more as a menu. Um, the peaceful blue is perfect. But again, it is a basic website. And if you really want people to call you, I would take it up a notch. So here's my recommendation. I would go to some of your favorite skincare therapy websites, whether it's products or services. I would look at what other people have designed and take the things you like and maybe build your own website apart from this free one. Because they do tend to be generic, the free ones. Okay, uh, let's see here. If there's any other ones. All right, let's, we can't not go to Clovis Enyum. This darn little thing that pops down gets in my way. Okay, Clovis work. Okay, and then we'll, we'll um, hit Miss Gales on the way out. Okay, so uh, right here, the, you know, the pictures of Clovis Rocks, the blue, the white, the yellow, uh, the red, very much um, a normal part of um, a, a branding of uh, uh, the Clovis Chamber. I love, love, love that join now and member logins right here at the top and then their social media buttons are the red. So that means my eyes immediately drawn to them. People will probably uh, click on them. The scrolling pictures are great. I don't know about the color of this box here. Um, I don't know. You might experiment with different colors. What do you guys think? It, it's almost like it, it doesn't fit, but it could just be me. Anybody have any opinions? 
I see what you're seeing, Sherry, and I think a different color might make it come together better. Okay. But what that color is, I can't say. And usually when I see something like this, I have no idea what the color should be, so I start experimenting. Um, it just doesn't pop, so I would try the blue. I would try the red, and I would even try white with the darker lettering, maybe blue lettering, and just see if it pops a little bit. Um, I love how you got all this, like, you know, things coming up and popping up. That's fun. Um, hmm. I might shorten the text or um, narrow it. Okay, so here's another design trick. See how the text goes almost all the way over side to side? My immediate response when I see text that wide across the screen is it's too much. I don't want to read it. And so on Apple, they used to have where you could click a little icon. There it is. So up at the top, right here, this little, uh, these uh, four lines, three and a half lines, that will narrow text for people because the narrower the text, the more people are likely to read it. That, that includes your emails as well as your website. So you'll notice on every website I build, you're gonna have narrow text. So I would say on yours, it needs to be narrowed because it's a little overwhelming. So I would narrow it to the width of your icons right here. And I love the icons. I think those are really good. So narrow those. Uh, the calendar looks, looks fine. Um, learn more. Oh, that's fun. All these cool little fade-ins and stuff. Okay. Uh, that looks good. Community links, by the way, Using links to other websites increases your Google ranking because Google loves that if you're cross linking. And um, so having, uh, again, different website links on yours will help you uh, with that. And I like the red down here again, basic information. They can click and call. You've got some good white space here. So really the, the main thing is um, narrowing that text. What do you guys think? Do y'all see anything that you think might could be a little bit different? I, I agree with narrowing the text. And it's funny that I've never even noticed that before, but now that we're really looking at our website, I, I agree that we should narrow it. So Nicholas is our web webmaster. So I think that's a good, Good feedback, don't you, Nick? I do, I agree. Yeah. And that would be on anything. Um, so yeah, definitely narrow the text. Uh, calendars, of course, are gonna be overwhelming anyway. So, uh, but no, it looks simple to use. I like that this stays at the top wherever you go. Um, but yes, I would say narrow the text. And um, there was one other thing uh, I just thought of. On when you, um, let me, let me get back to my homepage. So a lot of times people will center text. I will play with it. So I notice you have it centered, which is fine, but you may have it left justified and see what it looks like. Um, but if centered looks better then I would keep it, keep it that way. Okay. Uh, but man, there was another element, um, I just thought of. Oh, where's y'all's faces? Where, where, where's the faces? It's where's under, the... it's under chamber. Okay. Number... And then the staff. Ah, there you, oh, see now that was a little hard to find, but y'all have so much stuff y'all have to put on there. I can see. So yes, Miss Ernie is definitely the face of the chamber, but I sure would love all you little introverts to get your pictures next to um, y'all's names. <laughs> Kim would probably be happy to, but I love that. That's a great picture. Uh, one other thing is when you're writing your website uh, text, real quick, you want to make sure that you are speaking to your customer, okay? It, you're not saying uh, us versus they and them and things like that. You're speaking to them, and the more you speak to them, guys, 
the more they'll respond. And if you want to see how that's done, just read my about, read my, um, the, the text I have on my website, uh, cause I'm speaking to you and, uh, you'll get some tips. So here's Miss Gail's final one, cause we're running a little behind. So she has her logo right at the top. And then what I like about hers is she has her stuff first. A lot of people will put their about right on the left-hand side, but for her purposes, I think it is important to have it over here on the right because when people go to her website, they're uh, product shopping. They're doing research and they want to know about her products, not necessarily her at first. So, cause it's all about them in a good way. They want to purchase a piece of jewelry. And so that's a good thing. So then she has her designers, um, and you'll notice with her, there's a lot of um, black and white, and that can be important for product websites because you want the product to pop. But Ms. Gill, I would see if your designer could maybe add your pretty blue somewhere. Um, it could be something as simple as, uh, instead of having boxes of black, Oh, that's so funny. I pointed to the screen again. Instead of having boxes of black, uh, when people get on here, could it maybe be where there's not any of the black and then these actually, like see that little light gray square where it, it turns into your color, uh, your pretty uh, teal blue color. So um, that might be fun. Uh, but other than that, I would keep things mostly um, black and white just because of her products. Um, people want to look at that, but maybe a little bit more color. And then even right here by your picture of you and Todd, maybe having your blue color here. Um, so that would be important to get to your web designer, like your contact could be that pretty blue, that contact us button color. So I would just think of ways where maybe you can add your blue a little bit if possible. Um, if you, if you don't want to, that's fine, but that's one thing that I would do is add a little bit more color. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, is there anything, anything else? Um, oh, one more thing is where it has the about us again, get that text narrowed. If I, if it was me, I would be bringing your picture to right here. And I would be bringing your text to right here. I would narrow your website in uh, if they can do that. If it messes it up, leave it as is. But if they can narrow things in a little bit, that would be really helpful. Okay, so anything else? Let me stop screen sharing. And okay. Um, all right, I think I got everybody. Uh, and so Patricia, if you'd like some help and I sit down and brainstorm, you just let me know. And uh, I'm gonna put my number in here. If you guys uh, wanna message me and do just a, a quick consult over your website, complimentary, I'd be happy to. So is there anything else before we, we get done? Sherry, um, this is very informative and I'm thinking about specific members that have asked me um, about you know how they can improve their website so i'm going to contact them before noon and um encourage them to jump on and then any of you that are on here that have found this really beneficial if you'll help us promote the noon the noon session as well by posting on your facebook okay yeah i love this stuff yeah, this, I mean, to me it's so much fun yeah so. i appreciate you we all do all right well, I will see you guys later and don't hesitate to text me or call me if you need to. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sherry.